And that's where our framework is essential, right? It provides those guardrails, like you were saying, Mark, uh, having a script or that framework is important. Yeah. Uh, Izzy, share, share some advice on this. Yeah, well, I mean, with presentations and with stories, you need um, to have a framework, but your framework for storytelling needs to be much more concise. Um, and you really don't want us to tell a story that lasts more than two or three minutes. So we have a framework in power speaking, which um, we, we really love. It's a four stage framework. It starts with a scene setting bit where you describe where the action takes place, what when it happened, where it happened, who's involved, what do they want? And then you go on to a section called challenge and that's where you introduce the tension and the suspense because a, a story is never a story if people set out to do something and it all goes swimmingly and there's a wonderful solution there has to be a challenge there has to be something that amps up the tension and then you have a point where somebody has to choose to take an action the protagonists have to choose to take an action and that ends with the resolution. And when you describe the resolution, that's when it, it should become clear why you've told the story and what's the relevance to the audience. And there's some, another thing I love. Um, I love Aaron Sorkin's definition of a story. You know, he had, does lots of masterclasses on storytelling. He wrote The West Wing, The Social Network. He said, the basis of a story is intention and obstacle. You've got somebody wants something, they want it very, very badly, but something very big and nasty is standing in the way. And the story is all about how they navigate past that obstacle and come to triumph. Or if it's a tragic story, it ends badly. Thank you, Izzy. And I think it's important to note, it may have sounded like a lot, but you using a framework or whatever tool is best for you, that can be achieved in one or two minutes. That's, that's, that's exactly how I create my uh, stories, by the way. I don't, I never, ever, absolutely never start in PowerPoint. I uh, I actually write out what I want to, I, I use a kind of a shorthand, but I write out, here's the point I'm trying to make. Here's what I want them to feel. Here's the direction I want them to take. Is it shock? Is it whatever? I, I write that out. It's a shorthand that I understand. Mm -hmm. And then I go back over that and I go, this should be a slide. This should be a visual something of that nature. Um, and then this needs to be illustrated. That image can be illustrated with a story that will achieve this. It's extremely structured, actually. It sounds completely like it isn't, but it really is. Um, and if you want to if you want to study how to do this, then then go and find Billy Connolly, Eddie Izzard. I, I know he's a bit unfashionable at the moment, but Dave Chappelle, these are three of the best storytellers that mm -hmm. exist. And, and absolutely everything they say is scripted. It sounds completely like they're on a stage and they're just firing at the audience. And it's like, oh, how can you say that? But it's completely and utterly scripted and it's practiced mm -hmm. and it's designed to take you up and down and up and down. And that's yep. the process. Yep. And that's that's how all the TED talks are as well. People think that, that they stand, people stand on the TED stage and they just talk, but they have practiced for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. And Steve Jobs, he's often thought of as the high watermark of presentations and that it all sounded so spontaneous, but he would practice for hundreds of hours before mm -hmm. every one of his presentations. So that's the trick, isn't it? You prepare, 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 but you make it sound spontaneous as if you've just thought of it. That's the real skill. That that right. uh, that preparation mark is also when you were saying that you struggle with, uh, you find it difficult with an audience of ten. I'm sure there are people here as well who do that. And preparation, and I'm not saying you've not tried this, but preparation is of course the key to overcoming that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that when I've worked with Sarah and Ralph and training people is there's always that okay, I'm in the middle of a presentation and I stall. What happens? My brain has frozen. W where do mm -hmm. I go? Uh, you know, and that takes you back to muscle memory. So you might be in the middle of a story, you might have forgotten where you've got to, you might have done something, but you know that in you practiced, this is where you go next, even if it sounds weird, and it'll yep. put you back on track, and back you'll go. Yeah, uh, so a great exactly. advice. I just yeah. want to add, because um, I think this is what causes people a lot of anxiety is telling stories, giving presentations is about connection. It's not about perfection. If, right. if you stumble a little bit, no big deal. Be vulnerable, be human. It will make you more relatable.